Everybody, welcome back to the segment, The Basement. My name is Johnny, and we have a few people here with us today. We have Dawson and Rose. What's up? And then we also have Jesse with us today. Hey. So today we're going to be, uh, we just want to talk about kind of our, our childhoods, right? The experiences that kind of shaped and formed us into the uh, people that we are today. Um, Jesse. Uh, thank you for being here with us today. Um, I just wanted to uh, kind of ask, you know, uh, what if you could think of two specific occasions or events, periods in time, kind of uh, contributed hmm. to who you are today as a as a person. What were what, what those two? Hmm. Two specific things. I guess it would have to be <clears throat> my life from Hawaii to San Francisco. And from San Francisco to here, you know, in Whittier, pretty much. Those are the two major ones because before before any of that, I was homeschooled socially, you in know. In Hawaii. Yeah, in Hawaii, I was homeschooled. And just pretty much, I was just, I wasn't as social as I, I guess I am now. Mm. Um, being homeschooled, you're just alone for most of the time. But when I went to San Francisco, it just kind of, made me more open to one another and just be able to understand each other, just kind of, I guess, get out of my shell. Um, it was just, just be able to understand each other, just be more open about myself, be honest with myself. And when I, oh, that was the first one. The second one was when I uh, came here to Whittier Church, being introduced by, I think, did you bring us here to church? Of course I did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> of course. How else would you know about this? <laughs> How else would I know about God? <laughs> yeah. <You're welcome. laughs> oh, thank you, God. <laughs> um, shout out. <laughs> yeah, shout out. Shout out. Hashtag God. <laughs> but um, no, just when I came here to church, I what well, kind of like like a big, I guess a big event that kind of like helped me grow as a person is just. Know, being comfortable talking about my belief you know san francisco yeah about me but you know here in whittier is just like about what i believe mm -hmm. and i think that became more stronger because when i when i would go to work i i wouldn't really share you know my belief you know I'll just keep it like down low or whatever you know if they ask me i kind of do a roundabout way of you know saying i'm a christian but you know now when someone were to ask me because of here whittier church I'm able to express myself, you know, clearly like, yeah, I'm a seven day Adventist. Yeah, I go to church on Saturday. I know it's weird. <laughs> how, how would you roundabout way say it? How, how, how would I roundabout? Like, yeah. oh, you know, I guess I'm a Christian, you know, so, you know so a church here and there, you know, I just like, and then I try to like bring up another topic. Like, so, oh, the no new, arm. How did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> smooth. smooth. Yeah. Like, I believe in uh, God and you know, Jesus. Jesus? Sports, sports, and, uh, and, uh, sports. Uh, yeah, oh, like, sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kobe. Yeah. <laughs> Kobe. Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> but Back uh, to you. Yeah, yeah no. Just try funny. to redirect the question, you know. Um, but now you're bold. You just say it. Yeah, I'm just. And not necessarily. I don't care, but mm -hmm. I'm not ashamed to describe who I am in both belief and who I am as a person in my interests. I guess. Awesome. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, those are the two major events for me from home school to college and. To church life, I guess, or finding the balance within all those. Cool. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely an interesting balance because I, I don't know too many people that are homeschooled. You are now like one of three, <laughs> so it's, it's it's interesting. A rare breed. Yeah. A rare breed. <laughs> rare, 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 rare breed for sure. Um, Rose, I like the way you put it. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Oh, he. Yeah, the rare breed. And so I'm sorry. I think um, some events that made me into who I am is, first of all, a little bit of background. My parents are separated. They've been separated since I was a baby. 
So I've had always had two households. In they were across the city from each other, so it wasn't too far from each other. And um, both of my households um, struggle with addiction. And so I grew up with, you know, my family members, you know, around me just having these addictions, but me not noticing them because they hit it so well for a while until the 2009 session came up when I was in eighth grade middle the recession. school. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I was living with my mom for that around that time and her during when the recession hit she lost her job but as a banker she had for over 20 years maybe even 25 years to be honest oh, wow. and so she with her addiction she just spiraled she didn't look for another job she was unemployed for all all the way up until two years after i graduated high school probably and so during that time, me being in high school, you know, 14, 15, 16, um, she kind of just forgot about being a mom. So she was indulging in her addictions, her, you know, abusing herself. And um, I pretty much took over the role of parents to her. And so I had to be responsible of making sure she ate at least once a day. She um, was co recovering from being sick, um, making sure she was at least breathing when she was sleeping because, you know, God forbid, one day I found her one day overdosed or just not breathing because something happened to her. Right. And so with that, during that time, too, I was an angry, frustrated kid because here I am teenager barely trying to figure out who i am and now i'm a parent i'm a caretaker i have to look after someone else's life making sure they're okay and making sure i have to be okay too because if i fall then this whole house is going to fall how old were you this was like honestly from <clears throat> 14 till 18 when i left my house finally and i was around the time we were leaving you yeah and um, and I was just an angry kid. And although I was an angry kid, I was more mature. Mm. And in my f friend group, I was a Dr. Phil of the friend group. And I tried to solve everyone's problems, making sure everyone else was okay, because that's what I did at home. That's what I felt like I needed to do. But the problem with that was I putting that responsibility on me, I was judging other people's lives. I wasn't considering what they were going through, what their perceptions were, what what their beliefs were. I just focused on what I thought was right and what was right for other people. And that was very judgmental, very selfish, very egotistical of me that I knew better than most people my age and older. And so once I graduated high school, still being this angry, frustrated, the egotistical 18 year old now um my friend from high school isabel that we all know she decided to invite me here to the church and honestly throughout my life i knew about god didn't have a relationship with him just a dude in the sky looking out for me here and there but he had other he had bigger problems to deal with it's funny that you mentioned Isabel because, like, I feel like because of her, so many people acknowledge with your church yeah. is some Whittier place to come church. to. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's Whittier, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Whittier Church. Yeah. Whittier church. <laughs> <laughs> it became like, it's just, sorry. Continue. <laughs> so, but my second, yeah. Well, so, my second experience is coming into the church and didn't really want to be in the church, wasn't really looking for it. I was okay with my non-existent relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And um, so she dragged me here one morning Oh, on the Sabbath. And I don't know how she convinced me because I'm not a morning person. Wasn't looking for it, but she just did. And my first memory was meeting you. And it was before church started. It was like, it was early church school. What was it called? Like Sabbath school. Yeah, Sabbath school, Sabbath school right? Okay. And um, you were just so open about your life. You were easy to talk to. And for me, 
I was also very shy, very timid and didn't like talking to new people. So you were very easy to talk to and and um, relate to. And I think I told you my life story in like five minutes. Yeah, I knew I you. I sat there and I just listened to it. And that was crazy for me. And I thought like, oh my God, you must think I'm weird. I think you even said that. I yeah, think, I, I think, think I even, said that yeah, too. I think you're like, I don't even know why I told you all this right now. And I was just like, I, I don't know either. But I'm glad you did. I did. <laughs> And so coming into the church, meeting the youth group and meeting, you know, all these new people, you know, who want to get a close relationship with God, who already know God, you know, I felt like I wanted a relationship with him, too. Again, dude in the sky, that's all I knew about him. So I'm hearing all these testimonies and these stories that I didn't really hear before about God and I finally opened a Bible my mom gave me a few years ago, and I just started reading. And I couldn't put it down because I just wanted to know about this interesting God I didn't really know about before. Mm. But in that journey as well, I learned that I could be the bad guy. And that was new for me because I thought I could never be the bad guy. Make other people feel small, make other people feel bad about themselves yeah. or mm -hmm. hurt other people because I always thought, because seeing my mom, seeing my family, my parents, you know, everyone around me, like, yeah. I I was never a crazy kid. I, I never wanted to do bad onto other people, but I just didn't know how I could hurt other people with how I acted, how I treated them, what I said, you know. Hold on to that. I, I want to come back to that. Mm -hmm. um, Johnny, <laughs> I was gonna come to you. I, I swear, that's my thought. Like she's like, talking, and I'm be like, like, I'm gonna ask him. It's like deja vu. Huh? You're quicker than I am. Yeah, like it's happened. Quick yeah. on the draw. Hey. <laughs> anyway, um, so two life experiences that I could, I can really go back to to determine who I am today, is that uh, when I was young, we came. Uh, came back to California. We, um, my dad was in the military, kind of just went all over the place. And then we, I uh, was born in Whittier, California. And then we kind of came back and this is home. So um, my dad kind of knew all of our neighbors. I kind of knew all those neighbor kids, but when we came back to California, I didn't know anybody. And I pretty much got beat up for the money that I had in my pockets. How old were you? How old am I now? No, like, were you at that point? In, like, first or second grade. <laughs> so young, young. Yeah. Wow. I started seeing, like, tagging on the walls. People were asking, like, where are you from? And I didn't even know what that means. Yeah. You know? So I get punked for my money. My brother has a similar <clears throat> incident. And so then he kind of... My brother told me, he goes, hey, this is never going to happen to us again. We're never going to get punked like this again. And we developed a strong mentality where we needed to protect ourselves and not only... Did we feel the need to protect ourselves, but the people around us and our loved ones, our friends and stuff like that? I want to say even in high school, like if I saw somebody getting punked by somebody else, I would go punk that person just because it made me mad. Uh, it's fun. It's you're the younger brother, right? Yeah, I am. But you still have a very big brother mentality. Well, I'm mm -hmm. also an older brother. Are you a oh, middle yes. brother? I am the middle child. Yeah. <laughs> so my, technically. Yeah. My yeah. sister is 14 years younger than I am. Yeah. So in, in my teen years, that really brought like a protective instinct out of me. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that was one thing that I feel like really molded and shaped me throughout the years because I've always carried that mentality with me. Mm -hmm. And then the other mentality that I, the one other event that really changed my life when I was, I was 18 years old, super depressed. I, um, I, uh, I was trying, I was struggling with who I was and everything. And I, I decided that um, things would be better if I just didn't exist anymore. And so I tried to kill myself. And um, I felt like that would solve everybody's problems. The reason why people were fighting around me, the reason why my parents would be fighting, the reason why my, I don't see my brother that often or something like that. If I just didn't exist, it would solve everybody's problems. Mm. And so I tried to kill myself and it didn't work. And I found myself walking around asking God what he wanted from me. How come I couldn't kill myself? 
I had no idea that God was actually telling me he had a purpose for me and that, that my life was worth something, even though I didn't think it was. And um, I, I remember thinking like, I can't get like a for sure answer, but this feeling that I had was just so intense that I, I felt like I needed to seek God. And when I started seeking <clears throat> God and reading the Bible and finding out who God was, it kind of just showed me, God showed me love and compassion and all these different things through different people. And um, also in his word. And after going through that experience, like I can never deny that God exists. Mm -hmm. And I could also, I can never go through life thinking that what was shown to me that I that I that I couldn't show other people. I I have to show other people the grace and the mercy and the love that was shown to me. Yeah, um, that's just kind of how I am today. That's powerful. Mm. That's powerful. Yeah. So, what about you, my friend? So, oh, um, so I'll start off with my dad. A little background. Um, he had a kidney transplant in two thousand and nine. Um, and, uh, thank you, Auntie Jody, for watching this. Thank you, by the way. Thank you. Um, he got a kidney transplant in 2009. She's a donor? She was a donor. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you, you met her, Jody? I think I have. She's, she's, she, I mean, she's OG here. Yeah. She can kind of come here and there, but. Was she around <clears throat> during the, um, Lake, was it Lakewood? Linwood? Linwood. Ba OG. Back in the Linwood days. OG. OG okay. OG. <laughs> She's OG, <clears throat> triple OG. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, my dad got transplant, and I basically lived in the hospital for two weeks. This is when I was in sixth grade. And it was interesting because I felt, I like, I mean, it's a college. It's literally part of the college campus, so it was cool kind of just walking around the hospital. Um, it was kind of cool walking around the campus in general. Um, but what really stuck with me was seeing all the, you know, the teams of the nurses and the doctors and all different types of specialists and all different facets of uh, healthcare just kind of working together for one goal. And that one goal being just helping people. And um, I kind of really took that to heart and it kind of, you know, that kind of helping mentality kind of still sticks with me. Um, so that was the first thing. Right. The second thing I would say would be same year. Um, uh, my uncle was killed by a truck driver. Um, and that's one of those things where it's like um, you see it on the news, you know, but you never really expect it to happen. To you. It's one of those things where it's just like you see it like, oh, that's so terrible. I feel bad for the family. But to live it is 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 interesting it it literally feels like a nightmare um i remember that year like i it was really rough because i mean i had you know the, the the great joy that was my dad getting a kidney you know basically a, a, a second chance an extension of life almost um and then for it to just be a complete 180 within the same year you know um it was interesting uh i was a lot of a lot of anger it was pretty dark. I didn't have anyone I could really talk to because it was like, I'm 11, dude. Like, I, I, you were 11 at this time. I was 11. This all happened the same year. I was mm -hmm. 11 throughout. It's like, dude, like 11, it's like what, you like you have crushes. You know, maybe you'll just be like, ha, I like you at recess. Yeah. You know, but no, I'm like, my, my mentality was worrying about coming into puberty. In and puberty, yeah. Kind of, kind of starting to think things yeah. like, oh, wow. Like, I never noticed that. Jasmine was pretty cute, or uh, Brianna, or cute, or Kaylee. That's <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> interesting that you would mention that name. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, yeah, but I didn't really have anyone to talk to, so I, it was just a lot of pent up frustration and anger mm -hmm. and negative feelings that I didn't really, I don't like now, but I mean it was just part of, um, part of my upbringing. Um, Touch back on that later. I just wanted to, Jesse. I suggest Jesse. Yeah, Jesse, my man. Jesse. 
Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, you so you were homeschooled. Yeah. Right. And you went from being in Hawaii, right? Hawaii. Ha- Hawaii. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. sorry. I've never been. I'm not from there. To living You're in. You're forgiven. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> to living in San Francisco, which is, it seems like like a, a big culture shock. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it's, it's almost like. It's not strong enough of a word to describe it. Yeah, like night and day. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, tell, day. tell me, tell me how, um, like how, like uh, you know, just going that, making that change, and just being around different types of people. How did, how did those types of people influence you? Your social settings. Mm. Well, there, <laughs> compared to Hawaii and compared to San Francisco, socially, people are really nice in Hawaii, <laughs> dude. Like all the time, they go out of their way to help you if they need to. Like they'll they'll literally like take the time, explain things to you. You know, maybe even invite you to their houses, depending how far you guys are able to kick it. Dude, I I had a flat tire in Hawaii. Three people pulled over to help me with my tire. That's amazing. And and then they invited me to their house to eat at a luau. That's amazing. That's the I could not imagine that being here. That is common courtesy. Oh, I see someone. No one has helped yet. Oh, better pull over. Hey. Are you okay? Need some help? Need anything? Oh, uh, no? Okay, then. No, no, nobody is in fear of you. Hey, this might be a weirdo. I have no clue. Mm-hmm. No, they're just like, that person needs help. I'm full of them. I have them. This is the community. It's like a very, like, almost like a family orientation, but yeah. I don't know. The whole island was yeah. like that. It's just, it's so crazy. And Sorry, I didn't mean to take away from your oh, brain. No, no. It's, your, it's your life, not mine. <laughs> I went to visit. You're for, part of my life. For a little, yeah. I know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it's just yeah. Hawaii just has that mindset, that mentality, just that social norm, I guess. And compared to San Francisco, you're on your own. <laughs> yeah, like, for real. Like yeah. literally, like, and it's not really like people go out their way for you, but rather the the kind of almost like, I it's it's almost generalizing if I say it like this, but it's like. If there's something that you did wrong, they'll they'll yell at you, they'll scream at you. It's like they're like they're almost wanting to be angry at something. And they they almost, want to find a fault to point out. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's almost a reason, but that's not everyone. I yeah, that's, some, you said I, you were you were generalizing. I met right? yeah generalizing, but, but that's the people like, you have met, they weren't technically from San Francisco, right? Oh yeah, no. When they're I was from going all to school, over the world. All over the world. I mean, right. I would say about a third of them were from California, but they're mm-hmm. from the. We're from the south, or here the in south. Los Angeles. Yeah, here in the south, <laughs> the south. compared the to south. the north, you know, San Francisco. There's only one person I knew that was actually the from south. San Francisco. Wait, south meaning California, Southern, <laughs> Southern, 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 Southern California, California. Southern California. Yeah. the south, the south. <laughs> not, not like the south is not when the people south, say south. the south. No, yeah, no, that's mid south, <laughs> <laughs> middle earth, yeah. middle, yeah, middle, middle low. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, it's just. Just because everyone was just coming to this compact city, Mm -hmm. this, I wouldn't even say industrial, but this almost creative slash entertainment slash this busy people. Like it could be from CEOs to uh, game studios, animation studios, just this industry of entertainment to even just like what Amazon. And it's just this whole city just full of those people. And they're just, it seemed like their mindset of this like rush, I need to be there, is just I need to get there, get out of my way. So so what about wow. your friends? My friends, well, they're they were just almost in a sense enjoying the experience socially, just because this was something new to them. They're on their own for the first time, just like me. Yeah. And that's where I kinda like And that kind of puts you in the same boat with everybody, right? Yeah, this is our common foundation, our common denominator pretty much. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's cool. And that's how I guess that I guess that would be the yeah the thing that kind of linked us first, and then we started, you know, growing to know each other, and then thus have this variety of a friendship. You know, yeah, you have a very diverse like group of friends. Yeah, race wise too. Yeah, it's, yeah, this from background to race to background, anything, background, race, religion, and it didn't everything. matter. Yeah, it's just like oh, you, you like animation, oh, you like three D, oh, you like certain parts of aspects of like uh, art in general. Yeah, cool. Like let's work together and do something and maybe like help each other in class oh you know how to do this oh uh, this is that but that was because of the school setting but city-wise man it was it was different 
It's just, I bet. It was just, yeah, I so bet. Different. I know. Like, you get a flat tire and everybody just drives by you, like, get out the way. Hey, yeah. get yeah. out the way. Yeah. Where's your tow truck? Get out. Yeah. yeah. Call Literally. AAA. Call AAA. I don't care. Yeah, so we'll complain to you rather than help you. Yeah. For the most part. I know there's, there's, there's a handful those... of people in the world. <laughs> yeah. The diamond in the rough. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> very, very rough. <laughs> very rough. Yes. But yeah, no, those are my, <laughs> those are my uh, experiences in terms of a social setting from Hawaii. You know, very just family orientated, just like Ohana. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Ohana means family. Ohana means family. And that's a real thing. That's not just something yeah. you see in Lilo and Stitch. That's I was going to say, I only know that from yeah. Lilo and Stitch. Yeah. It's for real. Yeah. it's There's just something about Hawaii. And there's, of course, something about San Francisco, but just like just being like, almost in a sense, almost feeling safe or just feeling like at home. You can't have that. It's like Hawaii has that great feeling. and It's hard mm. to get it anywhere else. Mm. But I'm not saying it's impossible. You could definitely have it here in Cali. You could have Ohana here for sure. Yeah, like coming here to Whittier Church. That was one, one way of feeling that home feeling again. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty legit for me on that aspect. All right. Rose. Um, what about your social, your group of friends? How did that kind of ca- kind of point you into the person you are today? Mm, well, I had a really great group of friends in high school. We're all I was in color guard, and all my friends were color guard and band geeks. So the best kind, <laughs> best kind of nerds you could ever yeah. have. And so you know, we we weren't crazy kids. We just wanted to hang out with each other and have fun. We didn't do anything crazy, but um, after we graduated, you know, most of my friends went their ways, college or whatever. And so um, I only have, I still talk to a few friends now that are like my closest, closest friends. I, I consider family. But um, after coming here for the first time and getting to know the youth group, getting to know you, getting to know everyone else here, I feel like my group of friends here helped help me with my journey, getting to know and getting a relationship with God and pretty much helping me become the person that I'm trying to become today, which is, you know, being more reliant on God, being more patient, more kind, not as not fast to judge, you know, not trying to judge at all, be more forgiving and all of those things. And, um, the the impact on me is just here is just being more Christ like. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Me, I will go next. Thank you. <laughs> Yo. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna say, bro, you don't, you don't watch basketball. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. Uh, uh, just kind of going back to what I said when I was younger, my dad was in the military, so we moved around a lot. I went over, I, I went to over 10 schools in my entire life. So I literally had to learn how to make friends everywhere we moved. And none of my friends would ever be the same. My, my brother is literally my best friend. Hmm. Because through everywhere I moved, my, I mean, we like, almost, he, was always, he was always there for you. Yeah, we've almost beat each other to a pulp. But hmm. like, but in the end, like we're best friends yeah mm. and uh every place we've moved i feel like i had to adapt adapt to the different school and the different thing and as a matter of fact everywhere i moved it was like a different state so like when i lived in texas like yes. there's nothing but but country music yeah being played in Texas. Tractors. Yeah. So then I, I, when I lived in like New Jersey or Washington or any, any other place oh, that I lived in. all over. Oh, all yeah. Over. So when I moved to all these different states, like I've like a, a <gasps> adopted different culture music wise and everything yeah. else. So when I would move to another place, like it would just help me make friends with other people. I'd be like, oh, you like this music? You like that music? Or, mm-hmm. oh, you're from here or your family's from there. And like, I would know things more than other people who had just been raised in one spot their whole life i was diverse in a way where like i i knew a lot of culture so um as i as i got older i kind of used that um like chameleon kind of adaptation to where i could just fit in everywhere and by the time i got into high school where i actually we actually stopped moving and everything like that 
when I got into high school, um, I was able to make friends throughout the entire school. And I did, I tried to make friends so I wouldn't be lonely. And um, I, I used to have, in high school, I, I literally had friends that were like punk rockers. I had friends that were heavy metal dudes. I had friends that were football guys. I had, um, you know, just like the emo friends, skaters, mm. cholos, yeah. drug dealers, mm. all of them. My Every, it's like a, you're listing off all the cliche groups in like an early 2000s movie. Yeah, yeah. They're like a, <laughs> like a, what is that? Uh, 10 Things I Hate About You? Yes. Like just like yeah, that. Yeah. Like just like that. Yeah. You're, literally, you're listing off all of That's funny. I haven't heard anybody mention that movie in a while. It's a great movie. I actually like it though. I love that movie. It's a great movie, guys. Watch it. <laughs> if your parents are cool with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, all the all these different and I would make friends with all these different groups. And I, it doesn't matter what part of the school I went to. I would be like this walking around, just high fiving everybody. But I made my biggest core group of friends in middle school. And uh, those those guys that I they hung out with mostly throughout middle school, a bunch of jokesters and stuff like that. We all ended up being wrestlers in high school. And a lot of those guys ended up being like in my wedding when I got married. Mm. We might uh, we'll hit each other up like once or twice a year or something like that, but we're really, really close. And uh, although like I've gotten in a lot of trouble with these guys in my life now, uh, I feel like there's a reason why they still hit me up. You know, that they, whatever character traits that i put out there they 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 like about me and it's something that that uh, keeps us connected and bonded and then other than that my church my church friends and family and they're just i mean they've shown me they've shown me grace love and and acceptance in a way that i've never gotten anywhere else and because of that i share that with other people I hope you feel that way, at least around church family. Yeah, so I feel like that—that's the—that's the purpose, you know. A lot of people. If I did people miss that, man. I wouldn't be here. That's, with you. that's true. That's, <laughs> that's right. If I didn't right. feel it, Touché. I wouldn't yeah. be sitting here. And Rose wouldn't be telling part of her story and mentioning me in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll five minutes Johnny? of it. Yeah, I'll five minutes of it. Anyway, um, what was it? Was it? Did we get a chance to ask you about what? No, it's your friends, your my friends, friends, my man. Yeah, oh. they're great. Shout out. Cool. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Moving no, on. No. No. Uh, Next question. So, <laughs> so I was kind of the same um, in high school. I was kind of like a social butterfly, um, but it was just more of like I just ah. I just wanted to be mariposa. Cool. I'm just kidding. yes. See, 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 see. 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 <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there, see if you catch it. You're good. Sorry. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, so, uh, I honestly just wanted to, I, I wanted to be liked by everybody. So I was trying to be cool with everybody, you know? Um, and at the end of high school, I, uh, you know, I just kind of, kind of got this mentality of big fish in a small pond. I didn't see it that way at the time, but I went to a private school. So small pond. Isn't that a line from an ice cube song? Big fish, small pond. Probably, dude. I don't know. <laughs> I just wanted it to rhymes, know you knew. so yeah, I, it sounds familiar. Um, but um, so you adopted that mentality, big fish in a small pond. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I threw you off. No, yeah, you're good. Um, I throw myself off all the time. Uh, so I, I had that mentality, right? And um, from there, leaving high school, I went to college, which is the natural movement, and I like completely reverted because like naturally i'm pretty introvert i'm pretty reserved you know if i don't know you i'm not going to go out of my way to talk to you mm -hmm. but if i you know, if i'm cool with you then we'll talk so i had that mentality pretty much up until i reached my current line of work which is like uh so i'm an emt spoilers emt emt and um there's a saying that we say uh it's more of just like warn you not to be dumb but we all say it's a very small world out there. And it's just because, like, you know everyone. And um, I, you know, I was familiar with that. And it kind of it kind of brought me out of my shell almost because, uh, you know, before that, I was just kind of trying to be everybody's. You know, I was trying to be cool with everybody. So I didn't really have a personality to myself. It was just more of everybody's personality. But then I reached EMS and then it was like, 
dude, you got to be real with these people. You know, because you, you, you see, oh, you go through a lot of stuff together and you see all kinds of things that a lot of people don't. Yeah. So you have to be, you have to be true to yourself, but you have to be true to the guy next to you. And you have to be true to your partner. So, yeah, going, going from big fish to small pond to no fish, big pond, and then literally, literally an ocean, it, I, I would say it made me more pronounced as a person, my personality. Um, but enough about me. I don't want to hear about me all the time. I want to hear about Jesse. Oh, good. <laughs> like, good. I was wondering what oh, I was going to get back to. Finally, me. back to me. Oh, finally. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, back to you, my man. All right. <laughs> what? Ego is growing. You, so you mentioned, oh, yeah. um, you know, your, your move uh, from Hawaii, right, to Frisco and, and homeschooled. How did that, and not even necessarily just that, but how did how did those experiences kind of shape you into mm. the fine young man you are today? A fine young twenty-seven-year-old male that still looks like, still looks like you're twenty-one. Yeah, surprisingly. Yeah. <laughs> take it, dude. Take it. <laughs> Just take it. <laughs> Praise my mom. <laughs> Shout out my genes. Shout Thank out. God for DNA. Thank God, God for genes. good genetics. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have to say, I'm kind of glad how I was raised and how I got here today. Because if it didn't, I wouldn't have met any of you. I probably would have been to church. Mm. I actually I have no idea where I would be actually where I would be like career wise. How I would be you know in life, relationship wise. Like I'm very happy that I got to know Johnny. I'm very happy that I met Rose. You know, and I'm very happy to know you guys and you know the crew that is helping us put this together. I'm, I, glad, to, I'm glad to hear you say that because you told me that you didn't like me. I know. I hated you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say, I, is, you said my relationship. So I immediately thought, you know, Rose. But then you said Johnny. I was like, my relationship with Johnny. <laughs> so I was like, oh. I'm going by day of met yeah, or yeah, the yeah, day yeah, of yeah, yeah. introduction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I first met Johnny. My first. <laughs> my first. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I don't like him. <laughs> but he's all right. Oh, that was right. Yeah, that, right. yeah, that was interesting. To know. <laughs> I was like, okay, so he hates me. Oh. But yeah, no, if it wasn't for the me just moving to California, and if I were to just continue in Hawaii, I feel like actually that's that in itself, I think I could guess where I would be today if I just stayed in Hawaii. Mm. I probably would have kids. <laughs> oh, wow. No, it's just Hawaii does have an issue with um, getting into relationships rather quickly. And then unfortunately, having kids there's there is a bigger issue in hawaii with that i've not, never not heard of against this. anybody not against hawaii. Yeah. but it we does add financial struggle you know just add you know add, adds, adds things. to it adds yeah. flavor to your life <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> careful <Don't But> careful <laughs> if if that would happen i was talking about hawaii yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> just hawaii yeah. if i said why does that to you yeah hawaii. i don't know where i would be but i praise god that you know through the struggles, you know, financially or just, you know, personality, just that struggle of just becoming who I am today, you know, I do praise God that I did get to meet everyone here, that I continue to, you know, search for ways to better myself and to better myself with each other, I guess. Um, but no, I yeah, just praise God that I'm just here today, just sharing my experience with not only you guys, but those that are, you know, watching us. But yeah, no. All right, Dawson. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I, was, man, <laughs> I was ready. I was ready. I just wanted to throw that out of left field. <laughs> but Rose, really? my turn. Yeah, it's you. My turn. Yeah, it's for you. I think my experience has shaped me to be more compassionate to be more forgiving, to be more patient, and to have thicker skin. Because people will disappoint you constantly throughout your life. But the only, <laughs> the well, only no. <laughs> thing you could really rely on is yourself. And more importantly, rely on God. Because he hasn't failed me yet. And I don't believe he'll ever fail me. And to also understand, no, to also understand people as well because people don't purposely choose to have a bad life you know they may, may make bad decisions or a, 
something bad has happened to them and they turned out how they turned out at that moment, hopefully. But just to have compassion, not judge too quickly because you don't know what that person has gone through. Seeing it from my family, you know, my family aren't, isn't, aren't bad people. They're just people who made bad decisions. And um, to also cherish healthy friendships, healthy relationships a little bit more and work on being that to other people. I love, I love how you, you talked about your family. And another thing that I, I just want to point out, uh, just to, to clarify, because there's so many, there's this common misconception between people who look at Christianity or religion or anything like that. But like, it's it's not good people that go to heaven. It's, mm. it's, it's forgiven people. Yes. Yeah. And so like when people like try to break it down to like, am I going to go to heaven because I'm a good person or a bad person? That's not the question. No. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's not where you're going to find your answer. And if you're thinking like that, it's not going to happen. It's not. Yeah. It's forgiven people that go to heaven. And so it's people who understand where they're at with God and they don't want to be just stuck in sin or, or, or the life and say, I need God. Mm -hmm. Just to take it back. Um, I just remember the saying that Meshach said at one of the youth things, whatever, back in the heyday. Um, he said that in order, in order to be built, you have to be broken. Yes. That's very cool that you were listening. Because yep. <laughs> you, you, you were a lot younger back then. Dude, I was like two years old. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Man. I was smart. I was like reading the Bible. Three years <laughs> old. <laughs> I remember hearing Meshach, I was like, Gugu Gaga, man. Gugu <laughs> <laughs> Gaga, you kiss your beaky. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. But I'm that's like so, a... it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that's such a hard fact for, for some people, though, to, and you don't have to, you should be a good person, but it's more that you're forgiven and you yeah. ask for forgiveness. And that's something my parents don't, didn't realize. And most of my family don't realize. And most people give up because. How can they be forgiven with all these yeah. things that right. they've done? And blah, blah, blah. It's hard. You know, it's hard. You have, you have to admit that you, know, you um, were wrong. You were bad. You were. I was selfish. Yeah. I was this egotistical right. when I thought I was so, it's innocent, like, but yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. So, tumbling. Uh, tumbler. Tumbler. Yes, I, I'm really, really sorry. Catch. Hey. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> um. So uh, for me, my experiences in my life kind of brought me to a place to where I, I, I know me, myself, I'm, I'm a protector. I'm a protector of my home over my family, my wife and all four of my kids. I'm a protector of my friends and all my loved ones. I even find myself not even finding myself being a t t protector as like before when I was younger, I used to think that I, 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 would, I would need to learn how to be tough. I need to learn how to be strong. I, I need to learn how to be like and, and it's funny because i mean i don't look it right now but when i was younger i used to be known as like a very muscular person and it's because I, I was such a protective person that i felt like my exterior had to look intimidating enough to make somebody not want to challenge anything i was trying to protect and so i don't look like that now because now i feel like i don't protect my family with just physical strength i protect my family with how i follow god and how I pray for my enemies and how I run my household and how I honor God with my life rather than um, my words. Hmm. So, I mean, I still see the muscles. A little bit. Just a little, little bit. bit. Just the muscles. So you say you, you protect them uh, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Yes. Mm. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Check, check, check. Yeah, you got to check all those boxes out, yeah. especially when you become a father. And then you got to submit them. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Don't forget to submit the forms. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I submitted those long ago. Okay, but they just the paperwork just got there recently, though. Okay. Let's get it's, 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 it, it's the government. Yeah, it, two to three weeks. Two to three weeks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, let's go. <laughs> but um, so I am still continuously a protective person, but also um, within my other experiences and and my friends in my life made me realize for my my friends in church. They've shown me the, that God's grace is so much bigger than human grace. Like that God, rhymed. Sorry, that rhymed. God's grace. 
Bigger than the human mm-hmm. race. Bars. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. it could be. Could be. It could yeah. be. If it ain't, it should be. Yeah. Well, Dang, like, there's like another I, like a, like a I'm on it. Song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um, but but literally, like, God's grace is that big. God's love is unconditional. It's mm-hmm. deeper and bigger than anything we could ever comprehend. Mm. And because of that, I want to share that with other people. And I've done so. And I've even done so with my other friends that I've, I've made in the world just because God extended it out to me. I want to extend it out to them. And that's just kind of part of who I am today. And I haven't stopped doing that. Yeah, I agree. Awesome, my man. Johnny, back to you. Uh, Johnny, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, uh, uh, okay. third in inches. Third in inches. <laughs> um, what are you asking? But I just want to know your life experiences and how they reflected your character today. Mm, that's or, interesting. How your life experiences did that? How my life experiences developed. So, going back to my first story, which was about my father. I thought you were gonna sing it to us. No, <laughs> no. So... no. That's a that's a, that's a that's the live action basement <laughs> basement to play. Um, <laughs> the musical. Yeah, the, the musical, musical. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the musical. Um, but going back to my father, um, like I said, being living in a hospital at a UCLA Ronald Reagan, um, it it showed me it showed me like care and passion because i saw these people that were there for long hours you know i saw them every other day and you know they they had the same energy they all cared it, it wasn't like you know a facade you know it wasn't like that customer service thing but like these people actually cared about my dad they cared about me the the surgeon that did my father's uh that did his transplant it was like four in the morning um when he got admitted to the room but he was like hey dude do you want ice cream like we have ice cream like i can get you a strawberry shortcake right now and like i was like oh sure but then of course you know, i could let no, no ice cream past <laughs> eight um but, like these these people actually care you know and, and that showed me so are you saying that your mom made you turn down the ice cream <laughs> I'm glad that you got that from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't say like mom. Hey, mom. I didn't say it. I didn't say it, mom. Um, no, but that, um, like, especially because I work in healthcare now, um, that in order to truly be the best at what I do, and not even just be the best, but be the best character that God would want me to be. The best you. The best me that he wants me to be. It's, it's it's not for me it's it's there's a higher purpose right so i it showed me you know care care for people and be compassionate for people because everybody goes through their own lives their own struggles their own ways um which leads me to my next which is actually a little bit uh, a little bit of 180 um i was telling you guys about my uncle um and how I was so angry and I was this is just blind rage rage, you know, and I I I hated that man. I'm not gonna mention his name, but I hate I genuinely hated him. I wanted you to You know see his him. name? Yeah. Yeah. I was just curious. Sorry. I know his name, I know he, what, what he looks like. Um, I hope he's a happier looking man now, you know. But it, I thought you were gonna say you know where he lives. Oh no 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a different. That's yeah, a different yeah. basement. That's a different basement. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, cut the cameras. Cut the cameras. Um, but it, it taught me to not hate, and to to be forgiving. Kind of like you mentioned earlier. You know that you kind of have to. It's not the the good people that make it to heaven. It's it's the forgiving. Um, and I, you know, being eleven, I was like, I learned from my mom that you know you have to forgive, like no matter. How wrong you've been doing. Like you have to forgive. Which is funny because it's, it's, not, it's not a natural reaction. It's not. It wasn't to, to be it wasn't. to be hurt and to forgive somebody. It's literally yeah, literally like if you get hit, it's like you hit back. Yep. You know, and that was my mentality. I wanted this I wanted this guy to suffer. Um, I wanted him to go to jail. You know? And 
to you know see that I was wrong, um, and that uh, you know my my mom taught me that you know, forgive. Um, that definitely, I definitely still hold on to that because there's a lot of mean people in my line of work, and not not so nice characters. You just have to have thick skin. You have to forgive. That's what I think is true. And in, in that, I just want to say thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. And and these are these are very personal stories that we all share. There's only we've only shared two events in our lives out of the hundreds and thousands of events in our lives that have really molded us and shaped us. But if we pick the two ones that really touched us and, and made us feel like it impacted us the most. But I just want to put it out there for anybody who, who is listening to us today. Thank you guys so much for watching and for uh, watching us be transparent and real with you guys. I know that there are people out there that have been through either worse things than us or harder things. Or some of you guys have maybe even had a, like a really good life and came from a really loving family. Or you can relate. Mm. But we could, we just want to, just wanted to share this with you guys and really just, uh, be open in a way to where your life matters, no matter what you do, where you come from. There are things in your life that have made you what you are today, and God is using for a purpose. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for joining us. We're going to close out in prayer. Let me just thank Rose, yes. Jesse. Thank you guys for coming down and yes, thank you. Anytime. Thank hanging you out with us for this entire time. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are awesome. No All this time you that you've given awesome. to us. Anytime. Thank you. Um, Go ahead and close us out in prayer, Please. Jesse. Oh, yeah. If you don't Please. mind. Sure. I don't mind doing it. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us really be together and just be able to learn from each other, hear from each other's experience, and, you know, to hopefully, you know, use this information to help us grow in wisdom, to grow in knowledge, and just to be able to do better in our lives continuously. Lord, please be with those that are suffering during these times of, you know, COVID and just financial stress or those in Texas with, you know, weather um, and just those that might have loss or whatnot. Just be with those that are struggling um, and just guide us every day, Lord. I pray this is us name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.